we've talked about some of the acoustic cues that we use in addition to voicing to make the voice voiceless distinction more robust. How is this clinically relevant? Well, if we return to the speech of um, electrolarynx users, we can see how these acoustic cues can make speech clearer. Um, when we think about EL speech, what can we say about it in terms of its ability to produce the distinction between voice, voicing, um, voice consonants, and voiceless consonants? Well, everything's going to be voiced. Um, this is just on and it's, uh, it's going to be like vocal cord vibration. However, we can make use of um, the other acoustic cues like duration um, to make some of this clearer. So we've talked about how um, vowels tend to be longer when a voiced consonant follows. So let's look at that. Let's do some voice voiceless pairs. Ready? And so even though I'm not really making the voice voiceless distinction, I am able to change the duration of the vowel, which makes them uh, easier to perceive.